All right, people, let's talk about your refrigerator. I know it's not sexy, but here's the thing. There are a lot of you throwing away good refrigerators. You just don't know that they're good. So I'm going to give you a few examples where you're probably the problem. <laughs> or your house is the problem. It's not the refrigerator. So I did a customer's house today. I sold them this refrigerator, so I knew it was a good refrigerator. I had used it for years. Uh, and they were like, hey, the refrigerator you sold us isn't you know, working. Now, they've had it for a couple months. And they're like, it's not working right. And they're like, hey, it's not working at all. You know, this, that, and the third. So I'm like, not at all. And this is the one that I, you know, was using. I said, no, that's not true. So I said, I'll come up there. You know, you pay me my fee. I'll come up there, which isn't much. Uh, but uh, whenever I have somebody who's my customer, I never charge them a lot. Uh, but I cover my gas and lunch and stuff like that. So they have to pay for that. Um, I get up there and I look in the refrigerator. The lights are on. Uh, you know, I take my, you know, thermometer to it, you know, heater gun, heat gun and laser point it. And it's just like, boom, it says, you know, 41, you know, and I'm like, that's not terrible. This refrigerator is working. You said it wasn't working at all. <clears throat> so I'm thinking if it's, you know, before that, it, oh, it's not working. Well, maybe it was a power, you know, surge came through it and, you know, you took out the fan, which happens, or you took out the, you know, start relay to the compressor. No, the compressor is going. Uh, now the freezer was only 17 degrees and here's the problem. What they were saying is, <clears throat> it's not working good enough. <clears throat> Pretty much, it should be get it should get down to thirty five, uh, and it's not doing that. And it should get down to below zero. She was like, the milk is not cold enough, and the ice cream isn't freezing. So, for, f this is just to, so you guys know this, you want your milk to be you know not frozen but cold. <clears throat> your refrigerator should be around 35, 36, somewhere around there, all right? That's a sweet spot for milk. For ice cream, your refrigerator has to be um, either minus one or minus two. That's the sweet spot for ice cream or popsicles and stuff like that. Other than that, it's going to be kind of soggy, but it doesn't mean your refrigerator is not working. Here's one thing that can help you where you don't have to, you know, pay me to come up and look at it. One, turn the refrigerator down. Use a knob, boom, turn the degrees down. Very simple. <clears throat> if that doesn't work, pull your refrigerator from the wall. It's going to have a panel on the back of it near the floor. It might be wooden or it might be metal. It'll have a few screws. Take those screws out. Look behind there and you'll find the fan, the compressor, and, you know, some other metal parts. Uh, back to the condenser. Now, if the condenser is full of dirt and dust, take a brush and clean it off. That's all you got to do. Clean as much dirt off it as you can. What's going to happen is that air is going to circulate a lot better. Your engine is not going to work as hard or your compressor, and it's going to cool your system. Now, another issue with this particular customer is they... Their electric was bad. It's the second refrigerator that they went through. That tells me you have bad electricity. I tested it. Listen, people, your electricity has to be 120 and more for the newer fridges to work right. Okay? It can't be 114. It can't be 116. It can't even be 119. If, in this case, it was 116 and all the plugs in the kitchen was 116, plus their AC upstairs wasn't getting the house, you know, cool. So the kids were sleeping downstairs because it was cooler. They have a problem. Now, if it's one socket that's doing it, you might have a ground wire issue. So basically, somebody with some electronic knowledge, unplug, you know, turn off the breaker, unplug you know the plug and get behind there and see 
if those wires are connected the right way, because if they're not, the refrigerator is going to stop working because it's not grounded. These are just some things that are saying, hey, this is your fault, not the refrigerator's fault, and you guys can fix them yourself. Another thing is, if you're getting 122, 124 out of your socket, that's a lot of energy. Your refrigerator turns on and off. That and the AC are the only things that turn on and off without you doing anything to them. When that refrigerator turns on, it's just like you starting a car. It takes a lot of energy to do it. And when it does that, there's a surge that goes, there's a power surge that goes through your refrigerator. Now, if a storm had come through, a storm can boom, make a power surge, go right into your sockets, right into your refrigerator, and now your refrigerator is not getting cool because you either blew out your fan, you blew out the thermostat, you blew out the thermistor, you blew out uh, the computer, you blew out your, you know, uh, uh, start relay to your compressor. I, have, I had to replace a bunch of those before because a storm came through and, you know, boom. To protect from that, use a surge protector. 30 bucks. Go to Walmart. Get a third, get a third. And the reason why I'm, I'm like this is because, look, I, I'm going to make money off of refrigerators. But you don't have to waste your money by not knowing I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to make money because refrigerators are fickle. But these are just some things that you can do on your own. Get a surge protector, the one with the little light on it. Plug it into your wall. It will help you because if you're, if you're even if you have a new house, if every, if your washer and dryer is hooked up to the same circuit that your stove is on. You got to stand your electric stove is 220, which means when your electric stove comes on, your refrigerator might start suffering when it comes to getting the 120 it needs. It might drop down to 119. That's bad. You don't want that to happen. You want it to stay at 120 and a sweet spot is 121. But when you turn on something and it drops down, guess what? You're not getting all the power that you need. And as long as that stove is on or as long as a washer or excuse me, as long as the dryer is on because it's also 220, as long as both of those are on, you might have the microwave on. You might have something else going on. All that electricity going to toaster all that electricity at one time, guess what's going to happen? Your refrigerator is not going to get all the power it needs. Now, what you can do is have an extension cord and run the extension cord into the living room some kind of way, plug it into a socket there that's going to constantly get 120. But the way that whole thing is hooked up, it's not your fault. It's not anybody's it's not anybody in the house's fault. It's not the refrigerator's guy's fault. It's just the way they hooked up everything. You're not getting enough power. So uh, I'm going to end this video. Anyways, I'll talk more on it if you guys want to listen. I'm out.